ジューシーな肉料理二度とこの店に立ち入らないと誓えあんたの舌を満足させる品を出せたらな雪平に価値がないかどうかもこの一皿でわかるぞお上がりよ<笑>うまそうに味わってんなおい。What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Anime Kitchen, the show where we bring the food of anime and other media to life. Today's menu the gotcha pork roast from the very first episode of Shokugeki no Soma, the ultimate repellent for obnoxious businessmen trying to take over your family business. Let's go. For our mash today, we'll be using 500 grams of white potatoes. Peel the potatoes and then cut them into even sized chunks around 2 cm cube. Once the potatoes are diced up, transfer them into your steamer and cook for 15 minutes or until they're fork tender, which means you can insert a fork into them and they'll come out with little to no resistance. You can also boil the potatoes if you prefer. I'm using a steam basket to close emulate what Yukihira did in the show when he was preparing the dish, but I also forgot that he steamed his potatoes whole and then peeled them afterwards, so really it's dealer's choice. Just keep in mind that steamed potatoes will retain less water than boiled potatoes, which can lead to a fluffier and less gloopy mash. Now that we have our potatoes steaming away in the background, we can shift our focus onto the flavorings of our mash. To prepare our filling, we'll be finely dicing two shallots and 100 grams of brown Swiss mushrooms. In the original recipe, Yukihira uses a quarter of a white onion and 100 grams of king oyster mushrooms, as per the recipe book that I showed in the beginning of this video. However, I didn't have either of these ingredients on hand at the time of recording, which is why I'm just using what I had in the house, which was the shallots and the brown Swiss instead. You can easily substitute these for whichever mushrooms and onions are available around you or what you have at the house around the time, and it will still yield a very similar effect. So just have fun and experiment with your food, because that's what cooking is all about. Moving over to the stove, we have a frying pan over a medium heat. Melt down a tablespoon of butter until it reaches the foamy stage. And at this point, you can add in your diced vegetables and saute for five to 10 minutes, giving the mix an occasional stir. You'll know the mixture is done when all the moisture of the mushrooms has seeped out and evaporated from the pan, leaving behind a beautiful golden brown mixture. Season with salt and pepper and then set aside to cool. While the filling is cooling on the stove, we can shift our attention back to the mash. We've transferred our potatoes from the steamer into a large mixing bowl, and as you can see here, when we insert a knife into a piece, there is no resistance at all, and it can slide off easily. Now, in the show, Yukihira actually needs to get the rest of potatoes along with the filling, but I wanted to get a really smooth mashed potato consistency, so I opted to use my stick blender with a potato ricer attachment instead. Either way, using your mashing method of choice, mash up your potatoes and incorporate your filling. Fold everything through until it's well incorporated and then taste with seasoning. In my case, I needed to add a little bit more salt. Then we need to wrap up our filling with cling film so that we can begin to form the pork roast shape for the dish. Cover the mashed potato filling with the cling wrap and then roll it away from you to create two handles. Do this a couple of times until it begins to form a sausage shape. Once it starts to take form, you can rotate your handles in a clockwise motion in order to tighten up the package. Once you're happy with the shape, give it a little pat down to ensure that there aren't any air pockets and let that rest in the fridge for at least 45 minutes, maybe up to an hour until it's firmed up and it's ready to use. Now, this wouldn't be a gotcha pork roast video if it didn't have pork in it, so that brings us to the bacon. My intention was to wrap up this pork roast in a bacon weave, however, you'll see in a moment that this was only half successful. If you're interested in learning how to make a bacon weave properly, I've left a link in the description box below which thoroughly explains the process. We've taken our cool potato filling from the fridge, removed the cling wrap, and placed the filling onto one of the two bacon weaves, which I managed to actually salvage during the filming of this video. Because the mashed potato mixture is still tacky to the touch, you can see that as I press the weave onto the sides of the potato filling, it actually sticks in place quite well. Once that's all secure, using a large knife, we can attempt to transfer our second weave onto the roast with some moderate success. With the weave on top, start pressing it down onto the filling. After fumbling around with the weave for a bit and trying to patch up holes with leftover bits of bacon, I realized that the weave that I made just wasn't big enough for the filling that I had because my bacon was too short, so I ended up abandoning the top weave completely. Instead, lay over strips of bacon onto the roast, ensuring that they overlap slightly. 
Once the potato filling is completely covered in bacon and you're happy with how it looks, give this a good squeezing with the cling wrap to ensure that all the bacon is adhering to the filling properly because the last thing that you're going to want is for this to burst in the oven while it's baking. To further ensure the bacon doesn't curl up too much while baking, we're going to tie up the whole thing in butcher's twine. Full disclosure, I don't know how to do this properly and I just winged it on the day, so I've linked a video below for a much better method of doing this. If you want to do it my way for whatever reason, make a loop and tie a knot at one end of the roast, go down the roast around 25 centimeters, and thread the butcher's twine underneath and then create a second loop. Then repeat this process until you reach the end of the roast. After that, you want to thread the remaining twine underneath the roast and tie this off with the first knot that you made when you started this process. Remove the excess twine and then set this guy aside while we prepare our baking tray. To make our lives easier when baking off the pork roast, you're going to want to line your baking tray with some baking paper to catch all of the bacon drippings as the roast is cooking. You also want to spray down a wire rack with some veggie oil to prevent the roast from sticking. By using a wire rack, you elevate the pork roast, creating a gap between the meat and the tray. This allows the heat in the oven to circulate underneath the roast, which will provide you with a more consistent colouring across the roast, and it also helps the bacon to cook at the same rate. Transfer the roast onto the rack and then bake in a preheated oven at 190 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes or until the bacon is well coloured and crisp. Remove from the oven and allow to rest for 10 minutes. While the roast is cooking in the oven, we can focus on preparing our red wine sauce. Preheat a frying pan over a medium flame and add in 150 ml of red wine and bring this up to a boil, then allow the wine to reduce to about half of the original volume. When the wine has reduced, add in 1 tablespoon of soy sauce along with a tablespoon of sake which you didn't show on camera because you didn't realise the battery had died. Kill the heat and allow the sauce to cool for a couple of minutes, then whisk in 1 tablespoon of butter to enrich the sauce. Taste with seasoning and set this aside until you're ready to plate up. Alright guys, at this point the pork roast is done. You can see that the bacon has got some nice colour to it. Unfortunately with mine, because I did have quite short bacon, uh, the edges have kind of curled up a bit. So to combat this, you would need to have some longer bacon or I, or you could also make some smaller ones just so that it doesn't flare up as much. But as a first attempt, I reckon this has turned out really well. Now that all of our components are done, we can finally bring everything together and finish off this gotcha pork roast. Start by taking half of your red wine sauce and pouring it into the middle of your plate. Using a spoon, evenly spread this out into an oval shape that is just slightly larger than the roast. Carefully transfer the roast from the wire rack onto your serving plate using a couple of spatulas. If any strips of bacon get dislodged during the transfer, just gently work them back into place. Then, with your remaining sauce, you want to glaze the top of the roast to make it look a little bit more show accurate. And then, when you're done glazing the top of the pork roast, using some damp paper towel, clean up any drips and spills so that the roast looks tidy and presentable. Remember, Yukihira works at his family diner and you've got to ensure that you present your customers with a good looking plate. Finally, garnish with a little bit of greenery to add some colour to the plate and you've got yourself a gotcha pork roast. Alrighty guys, a massive thank you to all of you who have stuck around to the end of today's recipe. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what food from anime or other media you'd like to see in the future. Until then, roll up your sleeves, slap on an apron and I'll see you in the anime kitchen.